Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. It's open mic today, so feel free to call in and let us know what you're thinking about when it comes to dementia and giving care. The call-in number is 323-870-4602. That's 323-870-4602. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm thrilled to be with you. And um, for those of you that are new to our show, I'll just give you a little background about us. Bottom line, um, Alzheimer's Speaks is an advocacy-based program that uh, provides multiple platforms to shift our dementia care culture from crisis to comfort around the world. We also help uh, companies expand their brand footprint by leveraging our um, our platforms to connect to the people in need of their services, products, and tools. So if you happen to be one of those companies, please reach out to me. You can go to alzheimerspeaks.com. There's a big contact button there, or you can go ahead and message me through the radio channel here as well. I also like to thank all of our listeners because it's you who has really expanded our brand footprint in our network and I truly believe that Alzheimer's Speaks belongs to everyone because we want everyone's voice heard and we know that collaboration has really helped push um, services, products and tools forward by working together and breaking down the barriers of this is mine and not yours. And so, again, I thank you so much for all your likes, your clicks, and your shares, because that has really raised our profile, which is just good for all of us. There are so many people out there dealing with dementia, and they need the resources and tools. And I know, as a daughter whose mother had dementia for 30 years, what it's like to feel isolated and alone and not know where to turn for my information. And... um, I get uh, calls and cards and emails all the time saying thank you so much for the information that you share on your show. So if you have an idea, maybe you can be our next guest. Um, Maybe you are living with the disease or concerned about having it. Maybe you're caring for a loved one or a friend. Uh, Maybe you are a researcher. Uh, Maybe you've written a book, a song, a play, a movie, Uh, You know, maybe you are starting a new initiative. We would love to hear from you. Um, While we are waiting for some call-ins, and again, that number is 323-870-4602, 323-870-4602. I'm just going to give a shout-out to some companies that I just truly adore. Uh, The first one is the Silver Dawn Training Institute. Many of you know them as Dementia Raw. They do some really cool stuff in getting us to understand the disease better and how to care for somebody with dementia in a better light. Their approach, they say, is unscripted, unconventional, and unapologetic. And they do what's called introspective improv. And uh, they are coming to White Bear Lake, Minnesota, which is where I live. August 6th and 7th, and I'm actually going to join them and take their Certified Dementia Communication Specialist Training Program, and I would um, I would love to have you join us. You can register at cdcsdementiaraw.com, that's cdcsdementiaraw.com, or you can always go um, and look and see if maybe they are in your neck of the woods. They also do some dementia challenges, which are really interesting, that put us in um, kind of in that um, 
that blanket of dementia and push us out into the community and see what kind of reaction we're going to get and how it's going to impact our day. And that's a really interesting technique to get a better feel of some of the stigmas and myths that people with living with dementia have to deal with. Another company I'd like to give a shout out to is Care to Plan. Um, Provalence is a mother company and they have developed a dementia resource directory which is in beta testing right now but it's getting really close to fruition and you can go to my site alzheimerspeaks.com and just click on the big resource button resource directory button and there you it'll bring you um, right to their resource directory it'll give you a little bit of information it'll also if you're a company uh, tell you how you can take part in in becoming a member of that it's very economical under a hundred dollars a year um, to be inputted into this massive directory that not only will have housing types and financing and information on medication, but it'll have all sorts of training tools um, from video and radio to blog to books. Um, It's going to be kind of endless and you'll be able to find doctors and clinics uh, and our hope is to get this into the um, the clinics and the doctors for them to use so that they are giving people some solid resources when they are diagnosed or when they are um, having an issue with any type of, of, of issue with dementia. And some of the major content players in that are Mayo Clinic and NIH. So it's a it's a really great tool. They will be able to kind of geo search. So if you have somebody in another state, you can still help them out. You'll be able to share files, and um, again, more subcategories are coming under each um, under each directory there. So pretty excited about that. But just go to alzheimerspeaks.com and then click on the resource directory tab to find more information out there. I also would like to give a shout out to the Roberto app. Many of you may not know about this program, but it's really cool. It's a video um, game that measures your brain function, and it was devised by a bunch of professional athletes. And it's it's a very, very cool. And they are also working closely with Dr. Paul Nesbaum who we've had on the program a couple of times. But if you want to check out the Roberto app, you can go to alzheimerspeaks.com and you'll see a big banner ad on the right-hand side for that. And by clicking on that, you can actually get an extended trial to see what you think of it. And uh, from there, if you want to sign up, it's just a, a great way to kind of see how things are shaken loose with your brain function. And, you know, sometimes it's not dementia. Sometimes we just, you know, might be dehydrated um, and need to drink more fluids. Uh, Maybe we're not sleeping well. Maybe we're under a lot of stress. Uh, There could be medication reactions, all kinds of things that can be taken care of, but it's just something that makes us a little bit more conscious of what is going on and that if we if we decide um, that you know if you decide that there's more of an issue you can always bring this information to your doctor which will be very helpful for them as well. Maria Shriver on the other hand has the women's Alzheimer's movement and she has just been doing a lot of cool things. She just came off doing her Move for Minds tours in several different cities around the country And uh, they raised, I'm I'm not quite sure of the dollar amount yet, but I know they raised a a good sum of money for research, for women's women's research regarding dementia. And she's really kind of been the pioneer pushing for um, gender um, gender different um, research. And they're, they're finding some interesting stuff. So you can go to the Women's Alzheimer's Movement and you can actually see some panel discussions she had in different parts of the country with some of our top leaders in the industry, which are just fascinating discussions. And you can get more information on her movement in general. Uh, let's see. Again, if you'd like to call in, please do so. We'd love to hear from you. That number is 323-870-4602. That's 323-870-4602. 
In the meantime, I'm going to kind of keep rattling on here and give a shout out to our friends at the American Senior Magazine. They are a lifestyle magazine for seniors with topics ranging from nostalgia, health and wellness, and then they do interviews and spotlights of older, notable um, Americans. And I love their magazine because it's big print and it's easy to read. And it's it's always just kind of fun. They have some games and things that you can play um, in there as well. And uh, you can get more information um, on them by going to the American Senior uh, Magazine.com. That's uh, American Senior Magazine.com. Or you can, again, go to Alzheimer'sSpeaks.com. You'll see a tab on there. And if you decide you want to um, prescribe to their um, to their magazine, you can get a discount as well. Now, July 30th is just around the corner here, and I am actually going to go out to Pennsylvania to the Lehigh Valley Alzheimer's Caregiver Retreat, and I'm really excited to go um, myself and, and Kim Campbell, that's the wife of Glenn Campbell, are going to be the keynote speakers there, so I'm excited to meet her and uh, listen to her talk as I have not heard her in person yet. So if you are available, um, this is a free um, this is a free caregiver retreat, July 30th, from 8:30 to 4:30, and you can register at 610-969-2241. That's 610-969. 2241 and again you can always tell them that you you heard about it through Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I would love to meet you in person myself if you come out. That would be a lot of a lot of fun. Now there is another um movement going on that I think aligns really well with dementia and I I am sorry that I'm not going to be able to be at this event. It's the World Kindness USA launch event which is happening out in California and um, that is going to be Friday the 27th. They are going to have a full day starting with a meet and greet at 1030 in the morning and they'll conclude around 8.30. And um, it's just going to be a great event. I, I believe that the um, event is actually sold out and closed at this time. But it's, um, it's coming from overseas again, uh, like so many things do. And Michael Lloyd Wright White is the one who is kind of initiating it here in the U.S. Um, but several other companies, uh, countries like Australia and um, Japan have um, been with this movement for quite a while. And I just think it's a very, very cool concept. And you can go to worldkindnessusa.org. That's worldkindnessusa.org to get more information. But they are really just talking about having a better world. And I think, you know, looking at things from a positive note and understanding the impact that each of us has on one another and the importance of, of celebrating kind acts. They have these really cool um, kindness cards that you can, once you get one, you go online and you register it. And then once a kind act happens to you, you pass that card on to the party and then you go online and you write the story and then anybody who ever gets that card will see what you know what kind of acts I guess follow that card and it just keeps getting shared and pushed out through through social media which is pretty cool. Um, one of the other things that is going on this week is the um, 33rd International Conference for um, Alzheimer's Disease International, and that is here in Chicago. And once again, with my schedule, I am not able to make it. Um, that is going on the 26th through the 29th, and they are going to be premiering a new film called Every Three Seconds. Uh, which I'm very interested in um, seeing. They say someone develops dementia every three seconds in the world, which is pretty fascinating, um, pretty fascinating statistic. 
Now, if you have been to this conference, I would love for you to go ahead and call in and tell us a little something about it and what your thoughts are. I have not been. It, it travels all around the world, and it just sounds like it's amazing with the top scientists and researchers there, along with the people you know, pushing social movement forward um, with it as, as well. And so that's... Um, that's pretty fascinating, and I know that they are having a lot of people speak um, regarding dementia who have dementia, and I, of course, I love, I, I absolutely love that idea. I think that that is um, a total, totally brilliant, brilliant um, concept, and one that we need, we need more of. Now, this past May, um, ADI, which is, again, Alzheimer's Disease International, led a side event to the 71st uh, World Health Assembly in Geneva. And that was really all about mobilizing society and um, inspiring people and nations to develop a response to dementia, which is so significant. And um, that that was kind of a, a cool thing to see. If you have not been to ADI's website, that's something that you would you are going to want to check out because they are full of great information. They have global information and global solutions and just kind of their knowledge base. They are also working very closely with the Dementia Alliance International, and that is an independent self-advocacy organization of people living with dementia. Now, backing them, of course, um, are many of the pharmaceuticals, Companies And so they will be talking about what is going on in terms of pharma, but they also will be investigating a lot in terms of social need. How do we support families? What types of interactions and therapies work best? And um, Elon Caspi, who um, co-hosts our Dementia Chats with me, I know he is going to be out there speaking um, at um, – at the events uh, for one day as well. So we wish him luck and can't wait to hear what he comes back with because he's always so filled with knowledge. Again, if you have a topic that you would like to talk about, please call in to uh, 323-870-4602. That's 323-870-4602. I'm going to say that one more time. 323-870-4602. In the meantime, I'm going to just mention a couple other um, businesses that you may have some interest in. Uh, One is called Calendar Cards, and Calendar Cards starts with um, a K versus a C for both calendar and cards. And they um, have a memory system that they've created that helps people manage their daily lives. They also sponsor and host the Memory Cafe directory for the U.S., which they are now even expanding into other countries. Here in the U.S., we are approaching, I believe, 500 cafes that we know of, and we know we don't know them all, um, but Calendar Cards uh, so nicely hosts them. And you can go to memorycafedirectory.com and get more information to see if there's a memory cafe in your neighborhood, or maybe that's something that you're going to want to start up. For those of you who are not familiar with the Memory Cafe, they are a, I hate to call them a support group because they're really more of a gathering. And I I say that they're kind of like a bridge club or a bowling league. You don't show up for the equipment. You show up for the camaraderie and the people that you get to know and the friendships that are developed. And um, they're very fun The ones that I do here in Minnesota are really um, chat-oriented, and they're all about building that uh, community and talking. We don't do programming. We don't do art um, because that's what our group says that they want. They just want to be able to meet and chat because so many family and friends have pulled away. Others around the country are doing um, various programs and um, maybe getting involved in the arts from 
music to painting to um, dance. It, it really doesn't make any difference. But everybody is trying to do what's going to meet their community's needs. And um, here in Roseville, Minnesota, at J. Arthur's Memory Cafe, we try to work closely with our um Dementia, our grassroots dementia group in Roseville called the Roseville Dementia and uh, Alzheimer's Community Action Team. And there we have um, access to all the other type of, types of programming so that we're not duplicating. And that's what our group said that they like. But, you know, you work with what works well in your community because there is no right or wrong way to do this. There is no formal ownership to these. It really is about meeting community community need. Uh, the other uh, company I want to mention is the Purple Table Reservations. I don't know if you've heard about this or not, but they um, have a great concept where people can actually register to go into a restaurant and just ask for a Purple Table. And they will automatically be seated with a staff who is trained um, to deal with dementia and other types of disorders that could be post-traumatic stress, maybe it's autism. Um, There's just a lot of similarities. And it'll be typically in a quieter setting, so there's not as much background noise. And it's just a very cool concept. Menus may be a little bit different um, to ease the process of ordering and being able to have independence. And so they just started this out um, kind of formally this year. And they've had requests all over the country, but the goal now is to get more um, more restaurants trained to be able to do this. So if you are a restaurant owner or if you venture to one a lot, you may want to um, mention the uh, Purple Table Reservations to them. And you can find out more information about them by going to the uh, purpletables.com, purpletables.com. And uh, I, I just think that that's going to be fascinating. I know with uh, my family, we went out to eat a lot and having somebody who knew how to um, interact with my mom could have made things a lot easier for not only her, but everyone she was with as well, uh, kind of take the edge off and increase the com- comfort level. Let's see. Um, I'm going to throw that number out there again, Um, 323-870-4602. That's 323-870-4602. If you'd like to call in and tell um, tell us your story about dementia, maybe you are living with it, maybe you're caring for somebody, maybe you own a business or are thinking about creating a business. Uh, to help push our dementia-friendly communities and businesses forward. Um, Feel free to call in. Again, that number is 323-870-4602. In the meantime, I'm going to mention a few announcements I love. I don't know if you guys get, but I I, uh, subscribe to Us Against Alzheimer's newsletter, and they have just wonderful information each and every day. And so I'm going to share with you today just what came out today. And what they do is they take snippets of articles and then you can read more or you can just go off the snippet. So um, this first one talks about, uh, it's an article in the biospace, and they talk about the AAIC conference in Chicago this week. That was the, the one right before the Alzheimer's Disease International. And it says, Despite the prevailing mood of optimism about 25 Alzheimer's drugs in phase three testing, most failures occur in this phase three because positive effects of the drugs um, seen in similar groups don't always work in larger groups. Or despite um, decreasing or slowing down the um, the um, beta amyloid, there aren't really improvements in cognition and memory. And so the acting president, um, Drew Hasselfeld, um, says oftentimes we talk about the trials as failed trials. And he says they're not failed trials. They're advancing our knowledge of science. 
We are learning from past trials and learning how to attack the disease. And I, I think that that's really interesting that there are 25 right now in, in phase three. There's also an article that um, talks about the buzz of the results of the BAN 2401 Alzheimer's disease drug. And that is going to be presented tomorrow again at the AAIC conference in Chicago. And the drug uh, manufacturer plans to pursue accelerated approvals in Europe, the U.S., and Japan. And according to the article, the company said that after 18 months of treatment, patients who received the highest dose of this BAN 2401 saw uh, significant improvement in cognitive and biological measures of Alzheimer's versus the placebo. So that's kind of exciting to know. Um, There is another study that is showing that specific brain exercise Um, computerized training on iPads and so forth can really increase the production of of some of the brain chemicals and neuromodulators, I can't say this word, (laughs) neuromodulators that are critical um, to memory and learning. And the study is from the McGill University of Post-it Science and represents the first time this phenomenon has really shown, has been shown in humans. So that's pretty neat too. So um, Post-it Science is um, is uh, the first one to, again, confirm in humans that there's a more organic strategy that can work to leading to higher levels um, and um and, and even a resting state in the brain. So very neat there. Um, what else can I tell you? Let's see. This one says sex matters. we got to read this one. According to the July 23rd um, NPR Wisconsin radio segment, um, taking a hormone replacement therapy does not increase your risk for Alzheimer's disease, especially in healthy women in the beginning of menopause, but it also doesn't provide any benefits to the brain itself. There's been a lot of controversy over that lately. Um, Women using, um, you know, a, a natural form of estrogen have lower levels of brain markers linked to AD. So that's kind of interesting. And it says, we know in the short term that there's no cognitive downside to a woman who is healthy taking estrogen for menopausal symptoms. There do appear to be some um, mood benefits, which are important, of course. We do know that menopause in women um, are an increased risk for depression. And uh, but that that's been a big big controversial button for for quite some time. And let's see what else can I tell you about here. The let's see it says the China healthcare and retirement um, long longitudinal uh, study which concluded that caregiving for a person, uh, especially for a spouse who is severely dependent, likely leads to health declines in caregivers. And I don't think that's any real big news. We've known about that for a while. But it said the study also found that caregivers with uh, long-standing health problems seem to be more resilient. And the article goes on to say, noting that low-intensity caregivers were included in the analysis as well. And that was through the um, Ohio State University in Columbus. And they said in a phone interview that helping a loved one dress and groom can be difficult, but caregiving for a spouse with dementia or incontinence is a lot bigger deal. And again, I, I don't think that that is any any big surprise to anybody there. Um, again, if you'd like to call in, please feel free, 323-870-4602. That's 3 323- Two three eight seven zero four six zero two. I'm going to rattle on for a little bit longer, but not a whole lot. Um, if our uh, if people aren't able to engage today, that is quite all right. 
Let's see. What can I find down for the ADI conference um, in Chicago? Is um, I'm just going to look at the program and kind of let you guys know what's what all is going to be happening out there. If I can get it to print out here. Um, so on the 26th, which is just around the corner, at 5.30, they're going to have their um, opening ceremony. And then 6.30 to 8, there will be the welcome and reception hall. And sometimes people can't make it to that. But they will start out right away at 7.30 a.m. on the 27th. And they're going to, it says, participation in an obs- observational and therapeutic research to prevent dementia. What's in it for me and for society at large? And the um, so that sounds like it will be a really interesting uh, conversation. Then they will be having um, plenary sessions, and they're going to be talking at 9 o'clock about international and national policies. Uh, They're going to give an update at 11 for scientific progress. There will be poster presentations in the exhibit hall from 1230 to 2, uh, along with the lunch break. And then they'll... Uh, get back together, it looks like, at 1245 to 145 for the National Dementia Plans, increasing the impact. Uh, there will be a, a plenary session on awareness and stigma from 2 to 3.30. They're going to be talking about acute and palliative care at that time. Also, the rights of people with dementia. They're going to be talking about diagnosis, treatment, and research. There will be an ADI uh, workshop for fundraising, and they will also be talking about international and regional policy. Uh, then they'll be taking kind of a, a short break to be able to check out the, um, the exhibit halls. And then at 4 o'clock, they'll, re- um, they'll get back together again, and um, there will be a, a program on women in dementia, well-being and the quality of life, uh, diverse populations, inclusion and equality, inappropriate uh, medications and registries. And then there's going to be an ADI workshop responding to the Global Dementia Action Plan, as well as the Nordic Innovation and Solutions in in Dementia, and that is going to be supported by the Swedish Care International. And then at 545, there will be the launch of the 2018 Dementia Innovation Readiness Index, which is uh, sponsored by the Global Coalition on Aging, along with a global policy in progress um, addressing dementias um, across uh, the life course. On the 28th, uh, they're going to start in at 7.30 in the morning again, and they're going to be talking about targeting tau and tangles to treat dementia. There will be a uh, plenary session at 9 o'clock that's going to talk about technology, innovation, and um, entrepreneurship. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. And then they're at 11 o'clock. They have one in care in dementia. And then there'll be the posters in the exhibit halls and break. And they will come back again talking about dementia-friendly communities. Uh, There'll be an innovative showcase. They will have arts in dementia, uh, the national dementia policy for uh, Asia-Pacific, They'll have different models of care along with prevention and risk reduction and risk factors. And then at 4 o'clock, they're going to do the um, technology and innovation and entrepreneurship again. There will also be a consumer experience with lifestyle and nutrition, um, a session for youth and dementia, engaging people living with dementia and their care partners, 
uh, ADI workshop uh, for World Alzheimer's Month will also come in, and then they are going to premiere the film every three seconds, which will be their launch at 530 And then on the 29th, which will wrap up their day again, they'll get together at 730. And they're really going to be talking about, um, they say the title of this one is Let's Break Fast and Shatter Stigmas, uh, Framing Aging and Dementia in Ways We Can All Live Well. And that one is sponsored by AARP. There will be a education and training of the workforce from 845 to 1030. And they will be talking another session on dementia-friendly communities from 9 to 1030, along with um, psychosocial interventions, environmental and um, technology, uh, care support and training, uh, younger onset dementia. And then they look like they're going to wrap up with uh, psychosocial intervention um, plenary session. So what a jam-packed um, program they have. I'm, I'm so excited for them. I think it's just going to be absolutely a, a fantastic session. So um, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap her up. And, you know, please check out alzheimerspeaks.com. There you will find more information. Um, there are some fabulous webinars that we do where I interview people with dementia called Dementia Chats. And so you can really hear the voice of those with dementia uh, what they would like the world uh, to look like, and what their advice is to to get us there. Uh, you can also get information on memory cafes and becoming dementia friendly, or if you're looking for a speaker or a trainer, um, I would love to talk with you on that. So in the meantime, have a wonderful day. And again, this is Lori LeBay signing off for Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. Have a blessed week, everyone. Hi, I'm Lori LeBay, and I wanted to tell you about Alzheimer Speaks, which is another great podcast. You see, my own mother lived with dementia for 30 years, and I felt lost. Did you know every three seconds someone in the world is being diagnosed with dementia? Odds are it's going to hit your families, too. We want to help you connect to services, products, tools, research, and stories so you can be prepared. Please subscribe to Alzheimer Speaks on your favorite podcast platform.